how they have prophesied, cast out demons, done wonders in his name. Many people will come up and say, have we not done this in your name? We did this, we did that. And the next part says, Jesus will disown them as having nothing to do with them. And the last part, where he said, depart from me, you will practice lawlessness. Another Bible version says, you workers of iniquities. Jesus said he would tell this category of people who have presented themselves, they have made themselves as if they were known by him. But unfortunately, he never knew them. He would tell them, away from me, you evil doers. Now, we can see that people by themselves may find this a bit confusing. They will say, how, how then do we know? How do we know if he really knows us? It's written all over the scriptures. Unless we want to deny what the word of God says. The Bible says, just declaring Jesus as Lord and Savior without corresponding obedience to his word is nothing but a ruse. Or simply put, plain lie. In Jesus' own words, if you love me, keep my commandments. That's found in John 14, 15. Simply because somebody is obsessed with calling the name of Jesus, calling Lord, Lord, without actually meaning it from their heart. That does not say, indeed, people like that, they are candidates for heaven. Take for instance, I'm going to use an example of a student who is intending to go to a college. I want to use this analogy because I, I believe this will open the heart of some people to know exactly what our Lord Jesus Christ was trying to say. And this student understands the process that before you can be admitted into a college, of course, you need to seek for the application form, and at the same time, you have to find a way to actually fill the application and put the application in. But having known all this, imagine a student decides not to do the proper thing. And instead of filling out the form, sending the form to the authority of the school to be considered for their admission, the student decides to fill out the form and he keeps the form to himself or herself. And instead of doing the right thing, he, made, he, made, he or she made a copy of the, of the, of the form that, that he has filled out and then put the copy of that form on Facebook page, on Twitter, or uh, uh, whatever social media. And then the student started gratifying himself doing that, making a show of it that you see, I'm going to this college already. I love this college and I'm going there. And people started, you know, praising him. Oh, they, oh you are great. That's a lovely one you've chosen. It's a good college. Thank God for your life. But these students, in the actual sense, never sent in any application to that college. Now you ask me, who is a fool? Of course, that student is a fool. Because the student never did the right thing, though he knew the right thing to be, to be done. He decided to gratify his flesh. And he made a big show of the college he intended to go. Whereas he never did the right thing to be qualified for that college to start with. This is an analogy I want you to look into because this fits the situation of a lot of people who claim Jesus is Lord. But in the real sense, in the real sense, it's not coming from their heart. And it's so sad because these people, a category of them, actually, they are suffering from foolishness because it may be this has grown out of the culture in which they were born, number one. And it could be the socioeconomic situation has dictated some things to them. And they have grown with all these things, thinking those are the things that are acceptable. And they are putting these things above the standard of the word of God. I have a news for you. Nobody can change what God has written in his word. The Bible says, 
your unbelief, my unbelief, or somebody else's unbelief, will never make the word of God of no effect. So it is foolish to anybody to think that you can do things the way you like, and at the end of the day, you have that glorious place that God himself has prepared for those who will come to him through his only begotten son. On the other side, there's another category of people. Apart from the case of the student that I used just now, I can tell you who they are. They are the wicked ones. They are not people who are suffering from foolishness. They are simply wicked because they know the way that the only way is to go the way of the Lord, releasing themselves. But guess what? Because of what they will enjoy, they decide to go the wrong way. Those ones are called the apostates. They are the false prophets. And they are called the impostors. They go about deceiving people, doing all sorts of things in the name of Jesus. But really, they are not with him. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 29, verse 13, Therefore the Lord said, Inasmuch as these people draw near with their mouths and honor me with their lips, but have removed their hearts far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the commandment of men. <laughs> I tell you, this is so profound, and we will never in any way underestimate what the Lord is saying here. And I want us to really take this seriously. Those of us who know the truth that will be not deceived in the name of Jesus. You see, the commandments of men referred to in this passage could also mean man's philosophy. Like I said the other time, some people will fail to realize that their culture, the culture in which they live, where they, they have grown up, as good as it may be, is substandard when it comes to the standard of the Word of God. You are never to equate the two. The Word of God comes first, and then you see where your culture can actually align with the Word of God. You don't align the Word of God with your culture. That is getting it backward. And a lot of people are, are dying as we speak of this ignorance. And the other side of it are those people who know the difference even between the culture and the Word of God. They, they have chosen to go their own way because of their wicked acts. And those are the people called the apostates. As I go on, we'll see what the Bible has to say about all these categories of people. Now, in the same uh, book of Matthew, chapter 7, verses 20, 15 to 20, Jesus explained clearly what we are to look out for in a true believer. And he concluded by saying this, by their fruits you will know them. But more often, we get sidetracked by people's make-believe, heartward appearances. We get so impressionable that it's easy for anybody to just open their mouth and deceive just like that. Why does this happen? It happens because those observing them are either not saved, number one, or they are saved, but still they live as they were even before they, get, they got saved. And you know the problem, because they will not allow the Holy Spirit to do the work of sanctification in their lives. And guess what? They have what is called retarded or stunted growth. And they never get to understand what the sweet Holy Spirit can do in their lives. And you call that one a kind of a Christian. But this is different from the other side. I mean, the other one I mentioned the other time. Those people who have come out in a way to be rebellious against the word of God. And they have decided to use the same holy word of God to deceive people going around. Those ones, they know what they are doing. They are simply wicked. That's, that's the other category. You see, in, in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, from verse 15 to 17, Apostle Paul addressed this with believers at Corinth because of the level of worldliness in that society at the time. We need to study the original. We need to study the original that is the word of God. If we do that, it will be easy for us a lot to decipher 
the impostors, the apostates, we will be able to know. Apostle Paul made it clear that when you know you have come into Christ Jesus, you need not to live the way you were living before. There has to be a change. There has to be. A lot of Christians quote it. They will say, they will just run. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. If a man be in, a, in Christ Jesus, is a new creation. I know uh, all things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. But we don't see it in their lives. They still do what they used to do before. So why are you quoting that Bible passage? Apostle Paul, by explanation, said even our Lord Jesus Christ, we used to know him after the flesh when he was among us, but now he has been glorified. We don't know him after the flesh anymore. So also for those who have died in Christ and have now been risen in the, in the spirits, the spirit of God now dwells in them. They are never to live the way they lived before. Everything has to change. If you don't have that kind of a change in your life, you may want to examine if indeed he knows you. You may want to challenge yourself. If you do it, maybe you can be truthful with yourself for one time to know where you are, even in your Christian journey. You see, in the scripture, there's a, there's a description for apostates or false prophets. And this I will take from the book of Jude, chapter 1, verse 16. That's actually verse 16. It's got one chapter. Now, this is what Jude says. These are grumblers, complainers, walking according to their own lusts, and they mouth great swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. Now, I'll quickly go over the key words of that Bible passage. That's Jude chapter 1, verse 16. Great swelling words. This is perversion or twisting of the word of God to appeal to people's flesh. You see, they will quote the word of God, but mostly they will quote it out of context to deceive. Flattering words. Listen carefully. This is essentially giving people false impressions about themselves, usually how they relate to the word of God. They will make people to feel that God is there to serve them rather than them serving God. That is deception from the pit of hell. They do this all the time. They appeal to the fleshy, fleshly cravings of their listeners by constantly talking about God's love, God's mercy, grace, faithfulness. It is, it is it. But we never talk or they will talk very little about obedience to the word of God. These are liars. They are liars. Those are the apostates. You see them on your TV. You hear them on the radio all the time. All they shout about is the grace of God, the faithfulness of God, how God loves you. All those things are true. Those are, the, those, those are from the word of God. Nobody can deny that. If, if you look at your environment, you will feel the love of God. If you are not deceiving yourself, that's, that's, that's a known truth. Thank God everybody can say that. But let's look at the nitty gritty. The nitty gritty of the matter is, do you obey him? Because that's what it says in this world. Say, if you love me, you will obey me. And the love is talking about here. It's not just the love. It's the, if you are drawn towards me, if you really are in me, then you will obey my commandment. That's the word of God. So let's not try to say things that are not. Praise God. You see, living a life of obedience to the word of God, I mean, living a life of disobedience, rather, to the word of God and claiming to be using his power for prophecies, healing, deliverances, it is it's never to be misconstrued with knowing God, resulting from obedience to his word. Don't, mis don't mistake signs and wonders that people perform, the things they say. Don't, don't mistake those things for the true word of God. No, they're not the same thing. And you have to note, Jesus has not called us to be looking for signs and wonders. 
<laughs> we have to know that. It says, by their fruit, you shall know them. That's the word of God. We always have to remember that. Amen? How can somebody who is not con connected to God through his Holy Spirit? This is a question. How can that person speak the mind of God when they say they are prophesying? The other time I was watching a TV program and I saw a pastor. He came on the TV. He was, he was preaching to a congregation. And then the congregation, everybody there was just shouting. And I just listened for a, a, a little while and I had the pastor asking them, should I prophesy? And they would say, yes, prophesy. Should I prophesy? And I, I immediately turned the TV off because I knew both the pastor and the, and the church uh, members, they were all biblical, uh, they were biblical illiterates. They did not know what a prophecy is. If the pastor was de deceiving them, and the, those people in the church, they are, they are, they are kind of uh, you know, responding to him in a positive manner, that shows me something is wrong. Something is wrong. People need to know what the Word of God says. We need to understand what the Word of God says. The Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 20 to 21, knowing this first, that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation, for prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. What is this telling us? When the Bible says no prophecy uh, of scripture, of the scripture is of any pri private interpretation. This is not saying uh, the way you interpret Bible. That's not what it's talking about. It's talking about the source, the origin of it. That is not from man's origin. That's what it's talking about. So let's get that one clear. Then the other side is saying it never came by the will of man. You see, this the gift of prophecy is one of the. Uh, uh, the gift of the Holy Spirit. And as God has given to people, God himself, prophecy is speaking the mind of God, what God intends to do, what he will do in the future, whether in a nation or in the life of somebody, that is God using a person, his child, as a mouthpiece to speak forth. So you don't just come around and say, this is what I want to prophesy. To start with, that has disqualified that person. So we need to go and read Bible. When we read the Bible, we know exactly what the Word of God says. Have you noticed how convenient it has become nowadays for people to take on titles like pastor, bishop, prophet, apostle, etc.? This is because many of these people make a living from the title through deception. The Bible says, listen, what the, Bible, what the Word of God says, the word of God says, no man takes this honor to himself, but he who is called by God, just as Aaron was. That's in Hebrews chapter 5, verse 4. This is saying, if you are not part of the Lord, and you, give, you have given yourself a title of a pastor, a bishop, or this, those are the people that will say on that day, Master Jesus, uh, we, we've done this in your name, we've done that in your name, and then we'll look at them. I never knew you, because you never called them to be pastors to start with. They just got up and went because they thought it was a popular thing to do. And probably they have seen some of their friends making money through it. A lot of people have turned the word of God to a merchandise. We are they make money. You see them all around. You see, the end thereof is in the work of is in the book of, uh, of of God, Bible. Everything that God has spoken concerning those people perverting His word, nobody can change that. So uh, I appeal to you today: if you are one of them, you want to change your way. You want to change your way. There are false prophets, apostles, impostors everywhere who, although have knowledge about God, that is, having a form of godliness but have denied the power of God. Thereby, they engage in all sorts of deceptive practices. That's what they do. That's what they do. They try to authenticate themselves as truly called of God. If you are going about looking for miracles, I tell you, looking for signs and wonders, 
you are their ID candidate for deception. And you will be deceived, for you are looking for the wrong things. If you want to know the truth about this foolish, just endeavor to interview one of their close relatives. Try to do that, or associates, who is capable of telling the truth. Try to do that. Interview one of them. And you'll be surprised. You'll realize their true state because they will be able to tell you the truth. Remember, remember, Jesus has not asked you to look for signs and wonders. No. He has said, by their fruit, you shall know them. So why are you trying to look for something that is not? Why are you trying to do that? And some of them will come on the TV and they will be saying, they did one miracle there, they did another there, and they are trying to authenticate who they are. That's, that is not what will authenticate you as a man of God or a woman of God. It is how you obey the word of God. How your life ministers to people. People who are in your street, who live in the same neighborhood with you. Those people who know you, how you live your daily life. Those are the people they will know, even indeed if you are a Christian. They will know, to start with. But people get deceived all the time. They get this it. And this is an unfortunate thing. People need to realize that the word of God cannot be broken. Never. But do you know who is behind apostasy all these apostates? It's Satan himself. Satan is the one behind them. Because they have given themselves to the lies of Satan. So Satan has apprehended them and is using them as his agents. That is what they are doing. As we have evangelists, this is what I call them. I call them the evangelists. They work for the devil because they have made themselves the tool of the devil. And that's who they are. See what Jesus said to those false prophets in his days. He said to them clearly, he said, you have your father, the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him at all. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is the liar and the father of it. Just John 8, 44. In all honesty, looking through the picture, the deception that we now see proliferating everywhere is just a preamble for what is to come. We have to realize that. It's just a foreshadow of the end time scenario, if you will. The zenith of deception will be reached when Satan empowers both the false prophet and the Antichrist, that is, the other two parties of his unholy trinity. It will empower them to deceive through signs and wonders. You think you've seen signs and wonders? You haven't seen anything. It's going to empower them to display all sorts of things. And those who are so enticed, they will follow, they will follow those signs and wonders. And this will be like a word that's never seen before. Revelation 13, verse 14 says, And he deceived those who dwell on earth by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast, talking about in the sight of, of the Antichrist. This is talking about a false prophet. Doing so many signs. So you think you see false prophets around now? These ones are just preambles. They are like precursors. The real false prophet will arise. And then his deception will be the pinnacle of it, if we will. And the Bible says, Telling those who dwell on the heart to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. It will so, it will so much convince people, deceive people, he will ask, ask people to make image unto the Antichrist. And people will comply because they have been deceived. And you know the height of that deception? The Bible says in the book of Revelation, power will be given to such an image. When an image that was made with Anne begins to talk, tell me, if those people who are looking for signs and wonders, if they will not be deceived, they will be deceived because they will think there is no such, there is nowhere such power should have, would have come for, from, except from God Himself. But I'm telling you, the Bible says that is the deception from this pit of hell. It's from Satan Himself. So all the deceptions we see all around now, I'm telling you the truth, they are just child's play. I'm telling you the truth. The, the, the height of it is coming. So you want to wise up.
not be deceived. You want to wise up. Whether I decided against the lordship of Jesus Christ, it's not worthy reigning with him in his glory. So don't follow the world of Antichrist, which is being displayed as we speak by those little, little false prophets. Because this is how we know how people's minds are, actually. Jesus is first said, Whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my father who is in heaven. That's Matthew chapter 10, verse 33. That is plain and simple. And you know what? The end of all apostates, the false prophets, from the time of the Old Testament to the birth of the church at Pentecost and to the end of this age that we are in, the end of them all is summed up this way. And I'll read this from the book of Jude, chapter 1, verse 20, 12 and 13. This is the end. These are spots in your love feast. Why they feast with you without fear? Serving only themselves, they are clouds without water, carried about by the, by the winds, let autumn trees without fruit, twice dead, put up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, forming up their own shape, wandering, wandering stars, for whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. They are, I tell you the truth, they are reserved for hair fire. You don't want to be one of them. That is the word of God. You don't want to be one of them. So it's good for us to, to, to try to study the original. When you know the original, you know the fake. Don't look at the fake first. Go and study the word of God for yourself. As a Christian, I challenge you. Study your word every day, even as you go to church, because... When you stand before God, God is not going to be asking you about your denomination, which church you've been to. He's going to be asking you about how you have lived for him. That's all. So you better understand what the Bible says. Because our standard can never, can never be aligned with the word of God. We have to put the word of God first, and then we try to, to attune to tune our lives to the word of God. That's how we can live fulfilling lives unto the Lord. Amen? The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 31, Therefore, they shall eat the fruit of their own way. I'm talking about those people who have gone their own way, who have refused to listen to the truth, and they will be filled to the full with their own fancies. That's the word of God. And the Bible says in Galatians chapter 6, verse, verses 7 and 8, Do not be deceived, God is not mocked. For, where, for whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. That's the word of God. For he who sows to the flesh will unto the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the spirit will unto the spirit reap everlasting life. That's the word of God. Now I have a question for you. I have a question for you. And this question is very, very profound. If you call yourself a Christian, let me ask you. Are you one of the apostates or a victim of apostasy? That's the question I have for you. Because you need to examine yourself. Who really are you? You got to know. Because all these gyrations people go take about every Sunday, they do during the week. I mean, those things, most of them will not be able to stand before the Holy God. It is your obedience to the word of God that matters. A lot of people are really deceived by the big buildings. They all the routines in their churches or the place of worship and how they've organized everything. They are so, so deceived and they are so absorbed in those things that they, do, they don't even follow the word of God anymore. They have taken those things to be what will replace their, their following the word of God or living the way God has called them to live. No, those things will not stand before the Holy God. We need to ask ourselves, so are you an apostate or a victim of apostasy? Why is that? The word of God cannot be broken. Repent and follow the way that leads to life. In summary, I want to say this to those people who have received Jesus as their Lord and Savior. I want you to challenge yourself with these three statements of four that I'll be making. And all these are to encourage us to see exactly how God has intended for us to live as his children. And then he doesn't want us to live in deception. 
He doesn't want the, 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 the lies of the enemy to, to affect our lives after being saved. And then they now live miserably until they make it to heaven. And they get to heaven, they don't have any reward. That's unfortunate. That is not what God has called you to do. The Bible says, in the book of chapter, uh, to Colossians chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, uh, and 17 says, Let the word of God read, uh, Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another, in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, with grace in your heart to the Lord. And whatever you do in the word of deed, do all in the name of the Lord, giving thanks to God the Father through him. That is saying, no, no God through his written word, by meditation on his word, praying at all times, and avail yourself for the work of sanctification through the Holy Spirit. Obey God at all times as the Holy Spirit enables you. That's the life of a Christian. That's the life of a Christian. It's the life of obedience. It's the life of service unto God. It's, the, it's not a life of show off. It's not a life of priding yourself around and this and that. No, it's simple obedience. Secondly, understand that the working of miracles prophesying in the name of Jesus is not a true test to know a child of God. The key is simple obedience to the word of God. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 2, verse 3 to 6, Now by this we know that we know him, if we keep his commandments. He who says, I know him, and does not keep his commandment, he is a liar. And the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this we know that we are in him. He who says he abides in him, ought himself us to walk just as he walked. That is the word of God. It's so simple, I don't know why people want to kind of twist it. And I know, it's the lie of the enemy. But we are never to subject ourselves to the lie of the enemy. We have to keep our minds straight and let the work of, word of God do its work in our life. Also, know that Jesus should be the Lord of your life. And not man or, or man-made religion. Now, the following verses were in Jesus' own work. See? Jesus will never, never call those people who are not, who are not his, his. It's not possible. It's the Holy God. He said, my sheep, they hear my voice. And I know them. And they follow me. And I give them eternal life. And they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My father who has given them to me is greater than her. And no one is able to snatch them out of my father's hand. I and my father are one. That's from John chapter 10, verse 27 up to 30. That's the word of God. I want to pray a prayer for Christians who are listening to me. Believers, I'm talking about real disciples. I know the journey is not a bed of roses, neither is it a walk in the park. Walking in the narrow path has to be done with courage. No wonder Apostle Paul, when he heard good reports about Colossians Christians, he prayed a prayer for them. And I want to pray the same prayer for you. Because the empowerment that we need as children of God, I believe, should be enough for us to walk in that narrow path even unto the day that our body is redeemed from this corruption all around us. The prayer goes like this, that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will, in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That's the first part of the prayer. Strengthen with all might according to his glorious power for all patience and not suffering with joy. 
You need to contemplate on this prayer point because we need to be strengthened. We don't need anything that is outside of the word of God to distract us. We want to be filled with the knowledge of his will. In all wisdom and spiritual understanding, we want to be strengthened with all might according to his glorious power for all patience and not suffering with joy. That's a prayer that we need to take to heart. That the Lord Almighty will help us to live the life he has ordained us to live. Know that not having the Lord Jesus in your heart and being confident to the word of God will lead to something else. This is talking especially for those people who have refused the knowledge of the word of God. Who have said in their hearts they will go their own way. I pray that you will hear the call today. Because the Bible says, he who believes in him is not condemned. But he who does not believe is condemned already. Because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light. Because their deeds were evil. That's from John chapter 3, verse 18 to 19. I implore you in the name of the Lord to hear this word. Because the Bible says, he who does not believe is already condemned. What is he saying? He who is not listening is on his way to hell. That is the truth. That is the truth. Fire is reserved for the children of disobedience, not for those who have come under the blood of Jesus Christ by grace through faith. So I pray you open your heart to him today, even as I round up this message. Jesus is the only way to God, and he is the only way to heaven. The Bible says, Nor is there salvation in any other, <clears throat> for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Act 4, 12. You cannot buy or manipulate your way to heaven. But you can come just as you are to repentance and turn from your wicked way. The Bible says in Psalm 51 verse 17 that the sacrifices of God are, broken, are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. This is God. You will not despise. So what the Lord is asking is for your surrenderness. Know that you're a sinner. Come to him just the way you are. It's so simple as ABC. But that is the word of God. Finally, the Bible says in Proverbs 14, 14, the backslider in that will be filled with his own ways, but a good man will be satisfied from above. I pray you will not be filled with your own way. The word that has come from above today will satisfy you and then you will turn back from the way to hell. That is my prayer for you. And if you are considering this seriously, I will advise you even as soon as I finish praying now, follow the link to the page Want to Know Jesus. Dear, we have broken it into simple steps for you to see the steps of salvation. It's very simple. But for you to understand more the decision you're making and what it entails. And I believe God will meet with you there. Shall we pray, even as we close? Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you. Father, we bless you for indeed you are a good God. Thank you for your word that has come forth. Father, I pray for everyone who has watched this somehow, listening to it through audio, that Lord, if they have known you before, they will begin to know you more. And Father, I pray for those who are here to know you, that even as they have heard your word, Lord, that word that they have heard will mix with faith, and they will make the right decision today, even to come to your side, and for their lives to be transformed totally. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I will see you next time on this program. Until then, remain blessed.